Hello and welcome to our Sunday Gospel reading, Reflection and Prayer for the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find the temptation to test the virtuous man with cruelty and with torture. This is what Jesus reveals to his disciples. He is to be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death. The disciples' response is to squabble among themselves about which of them was the greatest. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? From the desires fighting inside your own selves. Because we want something we are prepared to kill. Yet for all our coveting, we do not find satisfaction. So Jesus puts his arms around a child to show us that he calls us to be peaceable, gentle, full of mercy, qualities we receive by asking for them. O God, hear my prayer. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus and his disciples went on from the mountain and passed through Galilee. And he would not have anyone know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Jesus and his disciples travelled through Galilee on their way to Capernaum. It was a journey in which Jesus was alone with his disciples, and he taught them many things about himself and about the kingdom. His conversation aroused in them thoughts of worldly glory and success, and they spoke of these among themselves, hoping that Jesus would not hear them. But Jesus knew exactly what they were talking about, and upon arriving in Capernaum, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? The question caught them off guard, and they remained silent, out of embarrassment. Our Lord doesn't scold them, but instead calls the twelve apostles to himself and helps them to understand wherein lies true greatness. If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. As future leaders of the church, the apostles must shun all ambitions for worldly honour and praise, but instead seek to serve Christ in humility. Christ sets before his apostles the ideal of humble and devoted service of which he himself has given the example. In the kingdom of Christ there is no place for selfish ambition and true greatness will be measured by the degree of devoted service. Many of the saints we honour today were great men and women in their own time. They were not all perfect, but they all had in common the virtue of humility. Humility conquers the heart of God, and it is even considered greater than any exterior devotion we may practice. Humility is the mother of many virtues, according to the words of a saint, for from it springs obedience, holy fear, reverence, patience, modesty, mildness, and peace. Let us pray often for the gift of humility. 
Let us pray for this gift using the words of St. Francis de Sales. My dearest Father, I beg you, for the love of God, help me to humble myself. Let us ask for this virtue from the Sacred Heart by saying, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto yours. God is our helper who sustains and sanctifies our life. With confidence in our Father's unfailing love, we ask him these prayers. For the Church, that through her the good news of God's love may be proclaimed to the poor and all in need of mercy. That God's bounteous kindness might transform the hearts and minds of those in positions of power. For those who are searching for work after becoming unemployed, that they might find hope in new opportunities. For the conversion of all those whose lives are dominated by envy, violence or hatred. For special blessings on husbands and wives, that their marriages might bear witness to the goodness of the gospel and their families be abundantly blessed for the grace of humility and for a greater willingness to serve Christ in others. We bring all our prayers to Our Lady, Star of the Sea. O Mary, Star of the Sea, Light of every ocean, guide seafarers across all dark and stormy seas, that they may reach the haven of peace and light prepared in him who calmed the sea. As we set forth upon the oceans of the world and cross the deserts of our time, show us, O Mary, the fruit of your womb, for without your Son we are lost. Pray that we will never fail on life's journey, that in heart and mind, in word and deed, in days of turmoil and in days of calm, we will always look to Christ and say, who is this that even wind and sea obey him? Amen. Loving Father, thank you for the countless proofs of your gentleness. May we always praise your name for its goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us, keep us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.